here. Awesome, everyone. Welcome to the latest podcast, The Terry Knight Show. Your host, Terry Knight. I have my amazing brother on the line here on the podcast, dropping some bombs left and right. Chris Knight. How you doing, my bro? I'm doing good. Thank you for having me, brother. Appreciate yeah, you. Yeah. I love you. I love you. So a lot, of, a lot of people don't know, but me and Chris are brothers. We grew up together. Uh, we're in the entrepreneurial space as well. I'm in the short-term rental side. He's in the uh, crypto and he's doing, um, you know, crypto you're doing and credit, credit scores and credit lines increases, all that good stuff. Leveraging yeah. credit cards. So he knows all that good stuff. Um, I can honestly say that you got me over $105,000 so far, just giving me gems and value and just giving me tips on how to get business credit. And this has helped us with either the short-term rental business, which is for furniture, you know, rent, um, other miscellaneous items. Like this money helped out so much and that wouldn't be possible without you. So I want to thank you personally because you've been able to help me grow my credit line increase a quarter of a million dollars already. And it's going to continue to grow with your help. But I think it's important for people to know your story and how you can help them do the same thing, but use the money wisely, right? Don't sit there and be stupid with it and buy, you know, flash dancing stuff like Bobby Castro says, like, you know, cars and, you know, jewelry left and right. Like that's not going to make you money, right? Um, so I think it's important for people to know this stuff. And I think you're the best person to, to teach that. So let's, hey, let's get thank started. you so much. And absolutely. So yeah, we definitely need to uh we definitely need to utilize the bank's money and use that capital to invest in, like you said, assets and things that are going to bring us money and not take money out of our pocket, you know. So that, that's also something that I teach Jaden, you know, what's the asset, what's the liability, because we need to know these things because we need to make sure that we're making the best moves possible, you know. So absolutely. I'm happy that I was able to help you get that money and you, you're you able to take that money and then invest and make more money. And that's the whole point. Uh, and the great thing about those business credit cards is a lot of them are zero percent interest for anywhere between six to 18 months. And maybe even more sometimes. I think there's some cards that have 24 months, zero uh, percent interest. So that means you guys get to borrow money from the bank and basically you're borrowing it for free because zero percent interest. That means you just pay back the minimum payment each month. Um, and depending on how much your credit card limit is, it's not not a lot at all. So um, yeah, uh, anything I can do to help you and your you and your reach and your followers out, just let me know. And like I said, thank you for having me on the podcast. Yeah, no problem, bro. Um, so let's get started with let people know like where you're from, your whole background, why you got into the whole entrepreneurship and and growing growing from that aspect, building businesses. Absolutely. Uh, born and raised in Orlando. And uh, I think uh, not knowing what to do and going through life and just trying to figure out what I like to do is probably the background. I, I make music um, and I understand that it takes time with that. And also with that, it, that costs money to make money as well. It costs money for studio time, it costs money for beats, it costs money for uh, marketing costs money for promotion costs money for everything right videos photo shoots so it costs a lot of money to do that um, so love music but it wasn't really um, not really making the big bucks and making money um, so I decided to jump into helping people out because that's what I love to do love to help people out I've been helping people out with their credit since 2017 and uh, just been helping so many people so many families remove all the negative items from their credit um, cause I never understood the power of credit either, you know, until we got older and until we, uh, started to, or what I did was invest in myself. I started to invest in mentors and I started to learn and started to read and stop going out and doing all that stuff. So, um, yeah, it's pretty much just trying to make a better way because I'm also a father just like you. And, uh, we just trying to make a better way for our children and our families. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So when you say credit is the most important part of like your profile, you, what what's the idea of credit score to get credit cards if someone was just starting out? 
Well, uh, as long it's not really about your score, it's really about your credit profile. So great question. And a lot of people think it's all about your score, uh, but it's really about your credit profile because you can have two items. You can have a car payment and one credit card and your score be 700. But if you go apply for a credit card, um, you could be denied versus someone that has five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different credit reporting accounts on their credit on their credit profile and they go apply for Amex for an example they're most likely going to get a, approved as long as they're in good standings because they have more things on their credit showing that they're responsible with their credit and that they can handle credit so um, I would say 680 and higher is what we we typically try to shoot for uh, FICO score 680 and higher to get approved for what you want as long as your credit profile it's not too thin. So having a thin credit profile could prevent you from getting approved for cards. Well, how old should you start, you know, building up your credit score? Uh, you said how old? Yeah. Should you be? Yeah. Like, if, if you know, how old should you start building a credit score? Like, uh, should well, you be a uh, newborn? Like, you know, for instance, yeah, so the great thing is, is that um, each credit card will allow you to add your children on as an authorized user. Each card has a different age limit. So I think it starts at like 12 or 13. So um, you can just Google it. I don't have the exact information right here in front of me, but you're able to add your children on as, as young as I think 10 um, and maybe even younger, depending on the credit card company. But um, if you have children, um, add them on as soon as possible. And if you don't have children or if your parents didn't know, like how our parents didn't know, then as soon as you're 18 is the best age, start there. Or um, if you're younger than 18 and you have someone who's responsible, like your family member, mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, ask them to be an authorized user, right? So that way you can take on their credit profile. You don't even have to get the credit card, but you'll be able to adopt either their age or their credit limit just by becoming an authorized user. And all that is, is you basically having your mom or dad or grandparent adding you on as an authorized user. And that way, again, you can adopt that credit profile. And again, you don't have to have the credit card, so they don't have to worry about you spending it, but you just want to make sure that you have that age and also that credit limit and it can build over time. So if someone has, that's a, that's a good point. So start as soon as you can, basically. <laughs> as soon as you can. That's right. As soon as the better. Uh, so how about credit increases? Like how would that work? Or what's the best way to go about getting increases throughout the rest of the year for 12 months out of the year to maximize the increases? Excellent question. Um, I typically tell my clients and um, to basically make sure that every three months, uh, three to six months, depending on the credit card company, but I usually do three months. So every 90, 91 days, ask for a credit card limit increase um, and ask them if they do a hard, hard inquiry or not, because some cards do, some banks do hard inquiries, some banks do soft inquiries as well. And as long as you're making your payments on time and you have a decent balance, which is under 30%, we recommend under 10%. I recommend 5%, you know, anything under 10 is really good. But if you want to just Make sure your cards are paid off at that point and then ask for a credit limit increase. You'll be able to continuously grow your credit that way. So every three months, 91 days is what I pretty much recommend. Gotcha. And I'm pretty sure people are going to ask like, whoa, how did I get it over $100,000 or $100,000 in credit? Um, accumulative. Yeah, yeah, accumulative all together, right? This is yeah. not a credit. Versus your other clients to getting the same amount or more. Um, how does someone wrap their head around that? Like they're probably asking, well, how is that possible? Like how can you have that much money available to use? Like what's, what's the process for that? Excellent. So the first thing is, again, your personal credit got, has to be okay. And what we're getting is business credit. So we're actually using our business entity, LLC, S Corp, whatever that you have. And we're using that um, to go to the banks and get business credit, but it's based on our personal credit. So the great thing is when you have decent or at least great credit, personal credit, and you're able to get qualified for business credit. And the great thing about business credit is that they give you two to three times your personal credit card limit. So if you have 
again, decent credit and you go to the bank and you have a business, LLC, EIN, Dunn's number, you know, set up the whole shebang, not a, want to make sure you're a real business, right? So that way you can get real money. So if you go to one bank and they give you 10 grand, for an example, that's just one bank and they only pull from TransUnion, that's one bank, one hard inquiry. And uh, we know how to pretty much make sure you go to each bank, figure out who they pull from and utilize the system to get as the maximum amount of funding for you. Uh, basically just using that strategy, you know, so you go to five banks at 10 grand, it's 50,000. How long is it going to take for you to save up 50 grand at your job by yourself after paying all your bills and everything else that you do, right? It's not going to be, unless you're in a, unless you make some really good money and you're in that top percentage, then it's, it's not going to be possible. You know, it's not going to be, it's not going to be possible, but it's going to take you way, way, way too long to save up 50 grand versus you fixing your credit for a year or two, maybe less putting yourself in position and then going for funding. And the funny thing is about the funding, which you can contest to this is when you build it for that time, a year or less, whatever it could be, as soon as you apply for those credit cards, it's, it's an instant, like, um, results right instant approval or instant you know results to figure out hey i got five credit cards in just less than 10 minutes or just sitting there filling out all these applications it's that simple absolutely so like you said it's uh you just fill out the application you can do it online and again as long as you're in position and you understand the strategies which you can you can do it on your own or you can hire us to do it. But obviously we have a good track record of, of getting funding for our clients and as well as you uh, as well. So, you know, as long as you're in position, your credit is good, personal credit is good. You have a LLC, you're set up the right way. You can definitely get some money from the banks, you know, so. Okay. So what, um, what, what should someone do with that money once they get it? They get 50K, just like you mentioned with the five banks, they got 50K worth of, you know, other people's money, right? Um, how would you leverage that? Like what was what's that approach for them to take those credit cards and use it for their business needs? Yeah, everyone is different, you know, so it depends on what their their uh, goals are and what their business is, you know. So if you are a real estate investor, right, and you need down payment, you need 20% down for that investment property, then that's your 20% on a, every every 100,000 is 20,000, right? So 20,000, boom, that's your down payment for your fix and flip. There you go. Um, if you have a business and you need to make sure that you, you're getting seen, you can use that money towards marketing. You can use that money towards hiring and hiring and uh, and taking care of things that you need to take care of to expand and to scale, right? Also, if you are, like you said, an Airbnb, you said it earlier, you use it to get your furniture. Uh, also, that can be first and last month if you're renting or however you're doing that, you know? So it gives you capital and for any business to, to grow, you need capital. So you can use it to expand your business, not to buy Louis and Gucci and the show off, you know, like you said earlier. So it's for you to make strategic moves to invest in your business and to move forward, move the needle forward and get yourself out of the rat race. And uh, you got to try, you know, so if you don't try, then you'll never know. So what about those people who, which, I mean, I was kind of still in that boat too, worried about their credit score getting dinged and jacked up. Like, oh, I don't want too many inquiries. Like, what would you say to those those individuals so they understand, hey, don't be stingy, like don't think that way. Like use the power of your credit score to help you succeed and grow. I would say- Because there's always that doubt a little bit, right? Like mm -hmm. I, I've gone through it. So what would you tell those people? I would say- you know, you have to, you have to, you have to take risk, right? There's with no risk, there is no reward. You probably to the person that, or the, as far as the example that you're setting, this person may have, ha may have a 700 credit score or 800 credit score. And I don't want to damage my credit. And I don't know, uh, like, okay, well, that's fine. We'll just don't complain about your nine to five. Don't complain about your boss and don't complain about inflation because all these things are real. And they're going to continue to uh, annoy you unless you do something about it. So the great thing about your credit is, even if you mess up, 
and you make a mistake, you can always clean your credit, repair your credit, and start all over again. And it, again, without taking any risk, there's no reward. There's a risk every day when you're driving your car. There's a risk every day when you're at Walmart. You know, there's people out here doing crazy things every day. You never know what's going to happen, right? So your credit score is just a number and you shouldn't let that number stop you from leveraging the bank's money because this is what the wealthy people do and this is what the rich people do and you need to do what the rich people do because they leave clues and they leave success. Uh, they leave success stories, right? And they leave trails of how they did it. And if you don't want to do that, then you're not going to have those same results. So don't worry about your credit because you can remove those inquiries uh, for business credit cards because it's a business credit card. So if you're worried about inquiries, those can be removed. And then you can go for funding again, something that we help you guys do. And then also, um, I'm just trying to be nice about it, you know, because <laughs> I'm on your podcast, but I tell people, hey, if you don't want to, if you don't want to take a risk and you don't want to leverage your credit, then then just have fun being in the same position that you're in. Because again, how long is it going to save take for you to save up an extra one hundred thousand dollars on your own? You're not going to be able to do it in a reasonable amount of time. So if you're thinking that way, I would say fix your thinking. And not to, not to, uh, not to be negative and and again, no risk, no reward. It's the nicest way I can say it. Oh, perfectly said. So you said a lot of uh, wealthy individuals leave trails. What are, what are some of those trails you think? Those, those insights, those golden nuggets you think that they leave behind? Well, I mean. Again, uh, real estate investors, they're always dropping gems, right? They tell you about the bird strategy. You can buy the property, you can fix it up, refinance it, use that money, go do it again, bird. So those are gems all the time. I drop gems all the time as well. I tell people, fix your credit. I tell people, hey, make sure, these are the banks that pull from here. This is You can get this credit card from this company. They don't even do a hard increase, for an example. If you guys want to go to Truist, Truist pulls from Exper uh, Equifax, actually, and they'll give you three credit cards with no inquiries, right? It's off inquiry, but it's a personal credit card. So you'll get three personal credit cards from Truist. They pull from Equifax as long as you have a 680 or higher and you don't have any collections or derogatory items. You guys can go get up to $45,000, up to up to 45000 anywhere between five to forty five thousand dollars from these just from truest truest you know so just from truest really the truest yeah and that's a personal credit card um mm -hmm. so that's for pretty much people that want to establish that relationship with that bank and also that just want to build their personal credit um they do have a business credit card as well and i am 95 percent positive they also pull from equifax and uh yeah gems like that you know so also twitter is a great place that I'm on all the time. Uh, there's lots of people on there sharing threads of information on how to be better, how to think better. Um, YouTube University, you can pretty much learn a lot of things online as well. Uh, but a lot of people like to be coached and walk through things. They don't want to do it on their own. So a lot of gems everywhere. It's just about taking the action with the information that you're receiving or not. So it's really up to you. <laughs> I'm sure you drop gems all the time on your Instagram, right? With uh, Airbnb hacks and how to how to help people maximize their Airbnbs. And you're you're always you're always you're constantly dropping gems on your Instagram as well. So uh, those are the things that uh, is what I mean by successful people leave clues and leave trails. You know. Gotcha. I mean, I think everyone, including you, tries to give us much value and tips and, and knowledge to help people start things. It's up to that individual to actually do it. Cause you can, you can give them a whole blueprint from A to Z. It doesn't mean they're actually going to do it. They'll probably just sit on it. You know, yeah, some people don't. Money, so. Yeah. And a lot of, um, a lot of what I have to combat or it's the right word try to overcome objections, you know, as far as clients that are, or potential clients or prospects would be the correct terminology for people that are responding to ads. They don't see the value in credit repair. And they're like, why does it cost X amount of money? I'm like, well, 
you clearly don't understand the value of credit and paying a higher interest rate for things are not good for you. Um, if you don't have a car and you need a car, you know, that's something that's, that can be very important. So some people understand the value of it. Some people don't. So I would say understanding the value versus the cost of, of credit repair or owning your own business or, or just taking information and implementing it into your life is, is priceless, to be honest with you. Of course. I think even when you started getting me involved with how I can build my, you know, credit line increases and, and submissions, I didn't think it was possible. Like, I was just like, what? And I, I was open-minded. I was like, yeah, let's go. I even told you, yeah, whatever you say, I'll do it. And I did it and it, it all worked out. But just the fact that these are all possibilities out there, it's hard to believe until you actually do it. Absolutely. Like, I'm still profound i got a quarter of a million dollars worth of credit line increase um my next question would be how would someone do you know anyone that can get up to a hundred like a million dollars in credit like is that even possible absolutely one of my good friends his name is bobby richardson and uh he actually i think he has about a million um in business credit and that's because he has two to three businesses and you just repeat the cycle. So you just repeat the same things that you did with your first business. And then again, we can remove those inquiries for you. And uh, that way you're able to go back through for funding. Now, also, you have to remember this personal line, this business lines of credit that you can get once you're over two years old. There is so many different banks, you know, and so many different um institutions that you can borrow from. So um, the great thing about the entrepreneurs that I'm associated with is that we're in a group of in, in on Facebook and we drop gems on brand new banks that are giving you approvals or high approvals. So we always are in the loop of knowing who pulls from where and how much you can get approved from. And just being around like-minded individuals are definitely a, a, a key factor to being successful and Again, anytime I find out something, you know, I send you a text. I'm like, here, here goes, go, 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 go try to get some bread from this bank. They pull from here. Go ahead and try. You try. You, you always send me a screenshot back. Yep, just got approved. And I'm mm -hmm. like, there you go. Literally, guys, like he, he sent me some gems like instantly. I applied that same night. I got approved for one credit card for 25000 another one for like 16000 Straight up business credit. I was like, wow, crazy. And I was just in less than one hour just submitting stuff online, thanks to you. And I was easily, what, like 25 plus 16? I'm not good with numbers, but that's a lot of money. <laughs> that's a lot of money in one hour for me. So I think that's important as well. And the funny thing is you mentioned LLC, which I totally forgot about that. Mm -hmm. you, you went to repeat the same thing over and over again so what you're telling me is now oh, I use... and i had to do the math myself because I, I didn't want to say it, i didn't want to get it wrong but they had a 41 000. so credit. i got forty one thousand because of you in less than an hour because you told me what to do so guys that that's quick easy money for getting consultant and services with my brother that easy um the best thing about this whole process is it's repeatable. Like you said, I have three LLCs. I'm looking to get more, obviously, but I have three. And yeah, I think I got three, three or four. I haven't even thought about what you mentioned. Start with the second and third one. And it's been two years. It's been two years for the one and it's been one year for the other one. So the, the and, thing is, is that with an LLC, it can be one day old. As long as your personal credit is good, the very next day you can go to the bank and get some money. Now, what I was saying for two years is that you can get a business line of credit, which is um, a line of credit on the business side, which is great. And it's usually a lot. It's a lot more money. Um, so you can get anywhere between 100 to 250,000 without any docs. Or you can even ask the bank, hey, um, what's the maximum amount of uh uh, that you can loan me without having to show docs and they'll tell you. And then all you do is say, okay, I want that amount. And they'll say, okay, have you been in business for two years? You know, fill out the same information. As long as you've been in business for two years, boom, that's a line of credit, you know? So again, like you said, if you get 200,000, that's just, that's not even credit cards. Let's just do three business, three LLCs. And let's just say you get a hundred thousand business line of credit that's all you were able to get approved for at a hundred thousand each. That's $300,000 that you can use to, 
take your business to the next level or invest in your dream, invest in whatever you need to invest in. So not so, even uh, any credit cards. That's just business line of credit on the low end. This to say you can probably get 50 to a hundred thousand dollars. So that's three hundred thousand dollars. Half of that, one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So most people don't even make that 30, 60, 90, 30, 60, 90, 120. That's four years at the 30, 30 thousand dollar a year uh average income for Americans, you know, minus tax. So you're not even getting that minus your bills. So you're not even getting that minus you guys going out, partying, clubbing, doing what you got to do, take care of your kids, children, food. You're not going to get, you're not going to get any, you're not going to be anywhere near that's four years, four or five years. And you're not even going to be anywhere near that, but in a, a year or less, or maybe two years, if you, if your business has been in, uh, if you've been in business for two years, then yes, you can get that money. Like, like you just said it by filling out the information properly and making sure you're structured properly. Well, you, you said business line of credit. That's different from credit cards. Absolutely. You want to tell people exactly what the difference is for those yes. who don't know? Yeah. So a revolving line of credit is what you would call your credit card. So your credit card has a limit of 5,000 for an example. Um, it's revolving. So if you spend the 5,000, you pay it back, you get to spend it again. Business line of credit is just a line of credit. Once you use it, um, you have, for an example, 100000 and you only need to use 25000 Once you use the 25000 you are um, you're res you're responsible for paying back that 25000 And then pretty much you, I think you can use it again, but I think for the business line of credit, if I'm not mistaken, it's just that once you use it all, then you're done. So I think the main difference is once you use it, you can't use it anymore. And once you pay it back, you would have to apply again. So once you use the full two hundred thousand, you'd have to apply again. Hmm. Okay. Well, more of the story is get more LLCs to to do massive credit card increases of of applying and, and increases over time. Um, that's freaking crazy. Yeah. What um the whole credit card scene is ridiculous. Like. Can you tell people more about that with the whole points, rewards points, like what your recommendations are those when they start racking up these credit cards? And Absolutely. So for an example, Amex Platinum allows you to get um, points as well. They also have sign up. So when you join and you spend a certain amount of money on the credit card, they give you 100,000 points. For an example, that can be converted into cash or you can use it for airfare. Um, Delta Airlines has a credit card. American uh, American Airlines has a credit card. Um, so all these different cards have different perks. If you're using a personal credit card, if you have, um, the card is this Navy federal. Mm -hmm. So if you have the Navy federal credit card, if you have the Navy federal, they'll also do cash back. That card is actually cash back. So, um, if you're going to use your card and you're going to use money anyway, use a card that you're going to be be rewarded for. I know the Amex Gold is really good for ads. If you use it for ads, it's really good for you guys because you get double the amount of points back. Um, so each card has its own perks. So the Platinum, again, is more for if you travel. So if you're good, you want to travel a lot and you don't want to sit through TSA, you know, you can get the Amex Platinum. They get you, you get the, you get all the perks. You get some, you get a Uber. They cover some Uber rides. They cover baggage. They cover uh, a lot of things, you know, so um that's a great, great thing. And each card is different. So the gold I know is good, like I said, with ads and then other cards have other perks. So if you're going to spend your money anyway, like pay your bills anyway, like we all have to do, you might as well use a credit card to be rewarded for it. So it's one thing to keep in mind, whether it be cash back, whether it be air miles, whether it be whatever it is that you want, because you can convert it, you know, just make sure you're being, you're being rewarded for using your credit card. Definitely. Definitely. So you mentioned, like, for instance, me, I have over 100,000 in just one LLC area. I have a second LLC. Technically, I can get 100,000 again if I do it right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Go and to the same one. things. You can do the same thing. Um, again, if you need me, just let me know. We can talk offline, obviously. I, I I got a couple more banks that you can definitely apply at as well. So I'll definitely let you know. Um, but yeah, for sure. Um, any of the other LLCs that you want to take for funding, like I said, I, I got a 
bunch of banks that I know where they're pulled from. So you just let me know. But every LLC, minimum a hundred thousand. Five LLCs, a hundred. That's five hundred thousand. That's half a million dollars. You can do a lot of damage with that. You can invest in a lot of Airbnbs with that. You can expand your business with that. Pay for ads with that. Start Toro with that. I don't know if Toro, Tor, I know it's a little bit congested right now and uh, overpopulated with Toro. So I don't know if that's going to be your route, but uh, you can yeah. do what you need to do with the money because you have capital now. Yeah, capital is key. They'll grow. Uh, Toro, yeah, it's been very saturated as of late. I think because it hurts and, uh, you know, enterprise coming back online, they have really cheap rates. So, you know, it turns like more of a premium, I think, at this point. I mean, very low cost, but the, the greatest difference is having that pickup drop off type of feel. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see. But yeah, Turo, you know, you know all about Turo as well. You can use that for funding to get, you know, cars and, and make money that way as well. Absolutely. Um, and also, uh, I don't know if your followers are like following what's going on with the money printing in the United States. And even though we are the world reserve currency um, because of COVID and them printing up so much money, you know what that does to your savings. That's why that's why Robert Kiyosaki says savers are losers because they literally steal from you because the money that they print, it devalues the money that you have. So if they keep printing more of the money, it loses more value. That's why Bitcoin is so important and why I love Bitcoin, because I understand how money works. And how money works is, for an example, if you have, what's something that you like, um, that's that's like, what's something that you like, Can what's something that you have that not everybody has? I don't know what people have. That's the thing. Um Oh, what you have, what you have. We'll just use you, you, you as an example of what you have. What do I have? What do you I think don't. that you have is valuable that not a lot of people have, like an item? Like maybe your camera or maybe some shoes that you like or. Yeah, I got some shoes I like, some um, Adidas. They're all white. Those are nice. All right. So for an example, you got, you. let's just say there's only 10 pairs of those Adidas, right? And you got one of those 10 pairs. Out of billions of people on the planet, right? You There's only 10 pairs. You have mm -hmm. one of the 10 pairs. It's valuable because guess what? There's only 10 pairs, right? Mm -hmm. But now guess what? If I come around and I say, all right, I can make those same pair of shoes and everybody now has those same pair of shoes. Are your shoes still valuable or are they still rare? No. Why? Of course not. There's too many of them out there. <laughs> Everybody got them now, right? And that's uh, the same thing with the U.S. dollar. If they can print the money up and everybody, well, it's not really everybody. It's the people at the top that get the money, right? The rich the rich get all the money and they let it trickle down onto us. But if they can print the money, they're devaluing your savings. So it's not wise to save. Obviously, save what you need to save to pay your bills, but the rest should be invested. So Bitcoin is good because Bitcoin cannot be created. And it's really just to cut out the middleman. The banks charge so many out, so many fees for overdraft fees, fee for maintenance, monthly maintenance fees, fee if yeah. you didn't pay something on time and it, and it bounces back and now you got an overdraft, fee, like just so many fees, you know? So unfortunately, that's the way that the system is now, but there is a way out and that's Bitcoin. So that's something that I, sorry about that. So, no, that's fine. You're going on a tangent with Bitcoin, so I might as well continue with that. Well, what, what's your thoughts on the oh, FTX bankruptcy side of it, which I'm not surprised, to be honest, after reading it, you know. I'm well, they get, what it, they get that from the U.S. That's exactly what the U.S. dollar is. They, they make a token out of thin air. They print it out of thin air. They get loans with the token that they just printed out of thin air. Mm -hmm. and it's different so crypto is different from bitcoin okay so cryptocurrency the these these exchanges are centralized there's a point of control somebody created it and has control over it somebody did create bitcoin but nobody can control bitcoin it's proof of work that mm -hmm. means you have to work to create a bitcoin and no even if you own half the bitcoin you still don't own you still can't change any of the code so it's immutable mm -hmm. 
uncensorable. Kanye got censored, right? He just posted a video that he can't even use his money on Apple Pay. Bitcoin, you can't stop anybody from using their money. It's that simple. Um, people in Ukraine and Russia, they're going with their, there's something going on with them, you know, and some people can't access their money. Bitcoin, you can access your money. You, you are your own bank. So that's why it's very important. Us in America, we're very spoiled. You know, we got the reserve currency. Nobody really cares about Bitcoin like that as far as saving yourself and saving your money, unless you know what's going on. Um, but we're pretty good, you know. But in other countries like in Africa, South America, Venezuela, where, where, where inflation has run rampant in Venezuela, it's a life changer. And not to mention El Salvador has made it their currency, you know. Uh, it's it's El Salvador's Bitcoin country. So uh -huh. I think there's going to be a lot of people following that lead. But again, FTX is a place where you can buy cryptocurrency and it is centrally controlled. Mm -hmm. and um, also, cryptocurrency, those crypto tokens are different from Bitcoin. So it has nothing to do with Bitcoin. Um, some people understand that. Some people don't. It is what it is. If we've been in the space for a while, so we've seen exchanges come and go. Another one bites the dust. <laughs> you got to keep your own keys. No keys, no cheese. No keys, no cheese. That's that should exactly. be a new logo. A new logo. <laughs> <laughs> that's Bitcoin's base was saying, so it's all good. But um, that's why we. That's why I'm going to make my video on how to withdraw your keys from the exchanges to your the ledger. Um, that's right. Oh dang! So you you have this breed of Bitcoin and credit, you know, scores, credit repair, stuff like that. Do you think someone should invest? And Bitcoin, with all the knowledge that you have about it, as far as where it is now, where it's going to go in the future, because there's a lot of people that still don't understand Bitcoin, uh, and I'm going to be frank with you, I, under I understand it, not to the full extent like you, obviously, but I understand it. I'm just not devoted to it. I'm not, you know, it's there. Again, it's not my focus. We're in America. We don't really need Bitcoin. It's not really a prevalent need for us here in the united states again the u.s dollar we're pretty strong even though it's losing value we're pretty good you know we're in america we're good we, we're spoiled man we're, we're spoiled rotten man we, we're pretty good other people not so good other countries not so good so i would recommend that you buy bitcoin and use it as a long-term store of value um not only has it gone from 10 cents or a dollar to $69,000, even though now we're at 16,000, mm -hmm. uh, it is still the best performing asset ever created, better than gold, better than S&P, better than anything ever created. So I would invest in it long-term and I have Bitcoin now, but my Bitcoin is going to be for Jaden for when he gets older. And I think Bitcoin could be over a million dollars one day. We'll see. Again, if it went from a dollar to, to sixty nine thousand dollars, and it's just a baby, I mean, once people understand what's going on, and again, once we start seeing the real effects of the money printing and the inflation, which we've already started to see, you know, it's only a matter of time. And I would say, if you don't understand it, go read the white paper, and uh, just do some, re you know, just do some research, you know, so. That way you can get a clear understanding or if you need me to explain it to you, I got you. Yeah, just follow Chris. He, he talks about Bitcoin every day, all day. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, how big is Bitcoin going to get? It, it went from, you said, 69,000 down to 16. Where is it going to be in 2023? Is it going to continue to go up, continue to go down? It's volatile. No one knows. Absolutely. And if I knew, I'd be a billionaire right now, right? So... Um, nobody knows, but the long term, that's why I said it's a long term goal, long term play. Um, I remember when it was three grand just mm -hmm. a couple years ago. So, you know, who knows? But the, the, the main thing is to, if you have a savings account, put some money into Bitcoin because over time, the inflation will drain your, will literally steal your, your savings away or your purchasing power will be 
deflated and you won't be able to buy the same things that you used to buy. Everybody knows now 20 bucks is not putting enough gas in your tank. You're not buying the same amount of groceries. And that's what we mean by inflation. So mm -hmm. Bitcoin is increasing purchasing power. Your fiat money is losing its purchasing power. And that's just as simple as it gets. So you want to you want to continue to be able to buy more in the future. You would have to, I would recommend that you would buy some Bitcoin. And if you want to continue to see your purchasing power decrease because they keep printing money because they have to, and they're going to continue to print more money, mm -hmm. You want to lose value. Hey, keep saving that U.S. dollar and that fiat currency. But every fiat currency in history has died or went to zero. So mm -hmm. don't don't make that mistake. You know, that's what I would say. OK. Makes sense. Makes sense. So for people who want to. Reach out to you regarding credit, right? And I'm trying to see, because I used to be in that boat, like I told you, I didn't really jump on it to, to really get started like I should have when, when you told me. And then I just went for it, right? The mindset. I'm trying to see what, it, in a giveaway aspect of it, like, when should someone reach out to you to sit there and say, hey, in the crowd, I got a 680, I got a 700, what can you do for me? Like, is there any and i know everyone's credit profile is different but let's say there's two people in the crowd one 680 one 700 you know off the bat you can help them to get funding personal and business credit easily correct correct uh, at least off the bat easily be determining just from the credit score right now at least i know i know more factors play mm -hmm. is there any bottom line saying that hey if you have a 680 700 or a specific number, I can help you get this much credit line. Yeah, it's and it's a little bit more nuanced than that. So you 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 can't because you can still have a six eighty and a seven hundred and have some derogatory items on your credit. Uh, report. True. So you can't have no negative items. So and, no negative with those credit scores. And 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 less than three inquiries and try to have less than three increase in the last six, six to 12 months. If you have, if you can meet those requirements, then yes, I can definitely get you funding personal or business. And that way you can start to use some of that bank's money to make some money. And what's those three things again? Okay. So first is 680 or higher. Mm -hmm. Second, no negative items. Okay. Zero negative items. Uh, it's probably going to be, let me add an extra thing in there. You want to have a credit card of at least $2,500 or at least one credit card with at least $2,500. It doesn't have to be that high was what I recommend. Mm -hmm. And then the last is no more than three inquiries in the last six months to a year. And if anyone listening to this meets this requirement, they can easily reach out to you and you can help them get funding like you helped me and countless others get funding, basically. Absolutely. It's that simple. That simple. Cool. Well, if you guys are not listening, that's how you do it. And if you're not in between that criteria, Chris can still help you improve and fix your credit score. Um, you know what? I did have a question on a side note. You know, people get stuff in collections. How fast can you get that off someone's someone's report? Like, what's that's the great, timeline for that? That's a great question. Because a lot of people, um, a lot of the clients that I deal with, they have a lot of negative items. So if you only have a few, or let's just say you have one collection, right? Mm -hmm. It can take anywhere between 35, one, I'll say one to three months. One to three and months? The I can take one to three months is because there's hundreds of thousands of letters that Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion gets. And they use a machine called eOscar. That, uh, that machine is going to read the dispute and it may ignore the dispute or it may remove it. And it may take more than one round, which is why we call it rounds because it's a fight and it's a battle. So usually it can take, if you only have one item, it can take one month, two months, three months, 35 days 
from when we send it is when we give you your update because of mail and because of processing and all that. So I'm going to say one to three months, as long as you don't have a ton of negative items. But if you got a bunch of negative items and you've had bad credit for two years, three years, four years, five years, please allow us six months to a year to try to get you back on track. That's all well, we have. Well, why would someone just thinking outside the box and you get a lot of clients or potential clients, right? Giving you feedback or just saying things, you know, you're getting, you know, their, their responses for people who don't understand the power of fixing your credit. Like, what would you tell those people? Like, Hey, like your credit is pretty bad. Let's work on, like, people don't want to take the time to six to 12 months to fix it. They rather keep it as is. And then, like you said, they're still stuck in the same position. Like I tell people all the time, the time is going to pass by whether you fix it or not. So like you said, if you want to take initiative and you want to be in a different position in the future, you have to make that change. And again, we spoke about it earlier. Some people are focused on the price versus the value of it. So again, if you're looking to get a house and you have a 480 credit score, you're not going to get that house. Hmm. You're not going to get a house. If you're looking to get a new car, you can get that new car, but it's going to run you $800 a month for that 2005 BMW, you know? So because you have bad credit, you know? So if you don't see the value in saving money in your monthly payments, as far as your car payment, as far as getting approved for credit cards and getting lines of credit, so you're able to, okay, well, hey, I can, I can take care of these bills and I don't got to worry. And oh, if an emergency happens, what if an emergency happens, guys? And you don't have, most Americans don't have $500 to $1,000 in their savings account. So if an emergency hit, they're SOL. So even for that, what about having an emergency savings? What about your car? What about your, your house? What about scaling and starting a business? Those are the things that you need to be thinking about. And again, the time is going to pass whether you fix your credit or not. So you might as well start now. Mm -hmm. And that way in six months to a year, you're in a much better position. Who wouldn't want a $10,000 credit card? Not for you to go spend and buy Gucci and Louie with it, but who wouldn't want a $10,000 credit card? Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. So that's what I would say. Again, just being as nice as possible because normally, <laughs> normally I keep it real, but uh, because we're on your podcast, I'm going to keep it kosher and clean and kosher. <laughs> No, I mean, you can speak your mind. I mean, that's what the whole podcast is about. But um, all right. I mean, that, that that totally makes sense for people who have. Like, does it make sense to have. Credit cards that you don't use, because I know people that have credit cards, they just sit there and yeah. I have noticed that, like you mentioned, you told me in the past, they will close that account if it's not being utilized at all. I think it is an excellent idea to keep your credit cards that are old, but maybe as I've mentioned to you, just buy a Snickers bar or buy some gas with it once every six months, mm -hmm. because that oldest, that's probably your oldest card. It probably has the lowest limit, but mm -hmm. you forget that it, it credit history is also a part of your, a, a part of your profile. So if you close a credit card that you've had for 10 years just because it's a low limit now you're losing all that history all that mm -hmm. all that history for 10 years is gone now mm -hmm. so yes i would recommend again buy a snickers buy some gas pay it off and keep it because again that age is very important speaking of that your credit score is built above you're pretty you pretty much have 35 percent of your score is on time payments if you miss a payment it's going to hurt you the most 30 percent is going to be utilization. The more that you use, the more it's going to hurt you when it reports. And there's a reporting date and a due date. Very simple. Call your card and ask them those dates. Make sure your card is paid off, if you can pay it off, by the due date or the statement date, not the due date. Make mm -hmm. your minimum payment on the due date. Uh, let's see, 15% is that history we were just talking about, right? So make sure you 15% of your score, overall score is credit history. So if you remove that history, 15% of your score is going to be affected by that. 10% is mixed use of credit. So 10%, you want to have 
your car loan, your home, if you have a mortgage, your credit card, you have a personal loan. So having a mixed use of credit is going to count for 10% of your scores. And the final 10% is going to be inquiries. So make sure that you guys are not applying frivolously because even though inquiries are only a minute part of your credit profile, if you get a whole bunch of them, it can affect you and it makes you look thirsty, right? So if you're over here applying for every single bank under the sun mm -hmm. and you go to the next bank and they see that you've been trying to get bread from all the other banks, they're going to think you're thirsty for bread and that you need the bread and that something is going on. So just make sure you're not applying frivolously. And sorry for that rant, had to, had to go in on that. Um, well, you know what? I think everyone should take what you're saying seriously and, and really take it to the whole. Like everything you're saying, you're preaching makes sense. It's just you have to take action and, and do it. So um, how often do you think someone should check their credit score? Just for people out there who don't know, right? Like I know a lot of people that have credit scores that probably check it once a year. Like I know I do, but maybe... Someone out there don't care about the credit score and they're like, well, should I care? How often should I look? I would say twice a month minimum. Oh, wow. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and the reason is because most people know if they're going to get a collection or if they're going to get uh, a late payment, you know? So if you know something's coming, <laughs> then just keep an eye on it. So that don't be surprised when it pops up. Um, and also if you're trying to make sure, and you don't just want a random thing because a lot of the times these credit bureaus are reporting things that are inaccurate, mm -hmm. that are old, and might not even be yours. So you might get a collection that pops up on it. And if you don't check, you're never going to know. And then you have a negative item on your account. You go to apply for something, you get denied, and you don't know why. Well, if you checked your credit report, you would know that something popped up on there. So just to be proactive instead of reactive, I would say two times a month minimum. And um, what? And how would someone check it twice a month? Like what? I don't recommend Credit Karma, but you can use Credit Karma. Um, what I'll do is I'll give you a link to put down in the description. We use Credit Hero and they'll be able to go over. That's all what all my clients use is 20 bucks a month. So what you can do is just log on and check your credit twice a month on there. They'll keep you posted on what's on. They'll keep you posted if anything negative pops up on your account. Equifax, so, TransUnion, and all three. All three? Oh, okay. Well, there you go, folks. You have a um, open-ended uh, outreach here to Chris regarding checking your score twice a month, how to get over at least 20,000, even more, if you meet his criteria easily, and um, you know, utilizing it for businesses and, and, and other factors to, to grow, right? Um, for anyone listening to this podcast, right, right, they'll listen to it. They'll probably watch it as well. But what's the best way someone can reach out to you? Like what channels and platforms and website is the best way to reach out to you? Yeah. And uh, I'll make sure you have all the uh, links so you can add it into the description as well. Um, if you want to, the best way and the quickest way to get at me is going to be on Twitter is going to be at Chris Knight 407 and that's at sign Chris Knight 407 and Instagram it's the same as well and then if you guys want to fix your credit it's called credit for freedom.com and that's credit the number four freedom.com and that's credit for freedom.com i'll take you right to the link to sign up and uh, we do a, a credit analysis for you for free so we'll we'll send you a synopsis of what exactly is going on with your credit how many negative items you have how many inquiries you have so all that will be laid out for you we'll email it to you as well uh, so you have it in yourself as well and i also want to let you guys know that if you guys want to get 10 bucks free bitcoin and you want to start dcaing swanbitcoin.com forward slash bitcoin chris it's ten dollars free bitcoin just for you to sign up and that way you can even you can pretty much buy it once a week, once a month, once a day. However you want to set up your DCA, you can buy 10 bucks a week and you can set it on autopilot. It'll automatically come out. You don't have to worry about it. So um, that's a great thing that you guys can utilize. Get 10 bucks free. Even if you just get it for the 10 bucks free Bitcoin, just get the 10 bucks free and just watch it grow over time. And then hopefully you'll do some research. 
Awesome. So you hear that, folks. Uh, reach out to Chris for all your credit, Bitcoin needs. I do recommend them. Uh, the best of the best. And thank you for tuning into the podcast. We catch you guys on the next episode. Peace. Peace. Thank you for having me, brother. No problem. Love you, bro. Love you too.